Hello and welcome to this week's Faith and Friends. School is starting, the Allen County Fair is here. I hate to say it, but <laughs> fall is feeling very nearby. Not much summer left. Well, I, I think if you want to go by the meteorological definition, there's like 24, 25, a couple weeks left of summer. But of course, there are many good things that come in the fall, football being one of those for many of us. And today on Faith and Friends, we have two stories on football. One involving a football stadium, another a thriving football cheerleading program. Speaking of that cheerleading program, today we introduce you to the Marky Chukes Show. The show has been in production here in Lima for several years and we look forward to introducing that to you right here on Faith and Friends. Also today hear from a traumatic brain injury survivor, Chad Klosterman, and we take a trip to Indian Lake for the recent Rock the Lake event. All that and more and auction items, but first our scripture. And this one is dedicated to educators who have already or are about to start the new school year. It comes from Deuteronomy chapter 32, verses 1 and 3. Give ear, O heavens, and I will speak, and hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. Let my teaching drop as the rain, my speech distill as the dew, as raindrops on the tender herb, and as showers on the grass. For I proclaim the name of the Lord. Ascribe greatness to our God. Certainly a, a great verse for educators as they are going to instill a lot of knowledge mm -hmm. to those tender shoots as they're growing up. And it can get frustrating, it can get discouraging, especially with some of the parameters that teachers must face these days. But we want to encourage you that you are a vessel shining the light of Jesus Christ in those classrooms. And we just uh, want you to walk in there knowing that. That's God has put you there. And certainly we're encouraging those who, who aren't teachers to pray for the teachers, pray for the students, pray for the administrators and the faculty as everybody's going back to school and it's going to be a, a time where we can just lift up those folks, lift up, lift up the school systems as a whole in general in prayer and just ask for the Lord's guidance upon each and every one of them. Well, teaching of another kind was taking place at Indian Lake State Park recently. At Rock the Lake, thousands gathered for inspiration in word, song, and much more. Jennifer has the story. It's a beautiful weekend in the middle of summer. What should we do? How about a quick trip to Indian Lake? But what could be even better? How about going to the lake and spreading the life-changing message of Jesus Christ? Welcome to Rock the Lake. So Rock the Lake got started because we have a sponsor, a friend of the station, they're RV Wholesalers, they're here in Lakeview, Ohio, and they wanted to have a public event where Jesus Christ was, was announced and celebrated. And so last year we got together and we started doing this just because that was their, their heart. And they said, we want this to happen right on the beach here in Indian Lake. August 6th and 7th marked year two for Rock the Lake, this year more than doubling the attendance from year one. An estimated more than 6,000 people traveled by car, air, motorcycle, and boat to corporately sing praises to Jesus. This is Old Field Beach transformed into a large arena reaching out to Christ. This is the greatest place to come out to. We can spend the whole day as a family. We had activities going on all day. And then they get to hear great music and we get to break down barriers of people saying, well, we don't like Christian music. Well, maybe you don't listen to the Christian music because listen to that. That is awesome, right? Four nationally known contemporary Christian bands lit up the stage for the 2016 Rock the Lake, but the event was more than just listening to music. It was engaging, interacting, coming together in prayer. After the meet and greet behind stage, this group of Rock the Lake workers and volunteers gathered with Crowder, who together prayed that God would move across the region in an amazing and real way. The weekend also included impacting speaking from Tom Henderson, a triathlon, art park, vendors, local musicians, and a church service. Funded primarily by RV wholesalers, the event was planned, promoted, and carried out by Shine FM, Christian Radio 88.5 and 88.9 housed in Bell Fountain, but reaching into 14 Ohio counties. An event like this falls right in line with the mission of Shine FM. There is absolutely no, no words I could express at how that is the goal, that is, that is the thing that we are here for, to, to save lives and to, to have them come to heaven with us, you know? This is why we do it. I mean, it's great about the music, it's great about the fun activities, but when we see those hands go up and people say, I'm making a decision for Christ, that is what it's all about. Rock the Lake 2017? Stay tuned to Shine FM in the months to come to find out more. 
Thanks to Shine FM for letting us be a part of that event by attending that event. Well, it's football season, and that, of course, means some exciting Friday nights at the Aria High Schools, but it also means leagues for younger players as well as cheerleading programs. Two things that offer Lima's youngsters an organized opportunity to work together, learn teamwork, and so much more. Today, we introduce you to the Marky Chooks Show. Marky Chooks and Travis Monford come together to create a show. They've been doing it for several years now, local interviews and posting their show online. Today, we bring you this special interview about the value of cheerleading programs in the city of Lima. What's up, y'all? It's your man about town, Marky Chooks, and it's football season, and you got a lot of young men and young ladies that are participating, whether it be actually playing in the football game or a cheerleader. Uh, Travis is out and about right now, and he's out with the coach from the cheerleading squad for the Gators, uh, Miss Crystal Jones. How you doing, Crystal? What's up, Travis? That's right, Marky. It's that time of year again, man. You, you hear the whistles in the background, you smell the grass, and you got Crystal Jones with you. When you got Crystal Jones, grass, whistles, it means one thing only. Football season is here. We're talking to Crystal about uh, Little League girls uh, cheerleading. Uh, talk to me about it. Why is it so important to have these young ladies out here, Crystal? And what got you started doing it? Well, it's very important, Trav, and hello, Marky and everyone. Um, it's very important because um, it builds a foundation for our girls. It gives them a safe haven. Um, with so much going on in our world and our community today, I just feel like it's very important to have our young girls starting out at a very young age. Uh, my youngest out here now is two years old. Um, just to, you know, build them up in the right way, um, teach them some, some fundamentals of cheerleading, something that there's also scholarships offered in. Um, and just to get them that, that family atmosphere, that um, that background of, you know, discipline and, and things like that. Okay, Marky, uh, if you don't know, Crystal been uh, coaching cheerleaders since the early 70s. So talk about it. <laughs> no, talk about it, Crystal. You've been doing this for uh, a long time. Uh, last year you were posting that, hey, you're, you're going to step away from it because it was just your time. But you're back out here again. Talk about how long you've been doing it and why you had to come back at least one more season. Well, this is my 15th season. Um, it's been a long time, a very long time. I'm getting old and my body don't move the way it used to. The pounds have packed on, but um, I love it. It's a passion. It's hard to just to just separate from it. Um, the, the reason I wanted to kind of step back is to give the girls what they deserve. You know, somebody that can still get out there, somebody that can still give it 100%. Um, I have a son who plays basketball and football in high school, a daughter who cheers and does track in high school. Uh, my other daughter, you know, she's going into her middle school sports now. And I think it's kind of unfair to, to not only my kids because I'm taking time away from them, but to the kids that I have out here because, you know, I still have to, have to give my kids some time too. So I just don't give it, I can't, I'm unable to give 100% of my all anymore. So that's why I'm kind of going to try to step away soon. But um, that was the plan this year, and I couldn't. I just couldn't do it yet. I got to make sure the foundation is, you know, 100% for them. Okay, and one last thing. Tell the people out there why they should come out and support the Gators and the Gator cheerleader. What is it so, so fantastic and amazing about Gator football that a person should say, you know what, I need my son, my daughter to be a part of that, and I need to come out there and support them? Family. We're all about family. I mean, it's, I mean, from, it doesn't matter who you are. Once you step on this field at Cook Park, you become our family. And, and we're just really big on that. It's Gator Nation, you know. And there's people who've, who've turned away and who've gone other places. And that's okay, because we still love them and they're still our family. But, you know, I just feel like that that's one of the key things, you know, just having that foundation. Somebody, I have girls that I'm coaching their daughters now who I coached. I was a shark for two years, but um, that's where I started out at. And we were turning so many kids away back then that, um, you know, Jeremy um, decided to start his own team. Okay, Marky. Um well, that's it with me and Crystal out here at Cook Park talking with the Gators uh, cheerleading. Uh, got Gators football over here. Make sure you guys look out for those uh, football games coming up this fall uh, within the next couple of weeks. So make sure you're looking out for those. Uh, get out there and check them out. Um, from out here in Cook Park, me and Crystal, send it back to you. Marky, tell me peace, Crystal. Peace, Marky. See y'all. Bye-bye. All right, peace to you too, Trav and Crystal. Uh, like I say, um, these teams, um, if you see these teams out and about, uh, or bake sales or car washes or anything like that, make sure you support them off the field as well as on the field. Uh, remember that the children are our future. 
Uh, this is Marky Chooks with the Marky Chooks Show, and we signing out. Y'all have a good day. Y'all be blessed. Love one another. Peace. Marky Chooks and Travis Monfort are regularly interviewing local individuals for their show. We encourage you to find them online by searching The Marky Chooks Show on YouTube, on Facebook, or other places on the internet. Well, TBI are three letters that may be foreign to you. Traumatic brain injury, it's something that is different in every single person who has dealt with it. Chad Klosterman is a survivor of TBI, and Dancy is with Chad and his wife to talk more about successfully moving past an injury like this. Well, it's, uh, it's always been said that we don't know what the next minute brings us. And um, there are two people here today that are going to talk uh, to us about that and have a very specific story to share. Chad and Emily Klosterman of St. Mary's, I'm so glad to see you. Great to be well, here. Yes, I'm sure you are. And um, I want to start by um, telling you that Chad is a traumatic brain injury survivor. That's a, a lot of words there. Um, <laughs> But you had an accident that changed your life in the year 2000. It was almost 16 years ago to yes. the day. Um, and you um, want to share your story because I think that all of us can learn something from it. And Emily, I'm sure that yes. you have your side of it too that um, will be impactful. But Chad, can you tell us, take us back 25, when you were 25 years old um, and what that day was like? Well, it was just a normal Friday. Uh, my, I had a guy, I, you know, okay, I lived in South Carolina. I lived on an island, and I wanted a boat or a jet ski, obviously, not a four-wheeler, which I brought from Ohio. And it was Friday night, movie night, and after dinner, I had a friend over to check the four-wheeler out, make sure it was running fine. Uh, my wife was like, Chad, come in, it's movie night. So I had one more ride, just one more ride. And I took off, I went down, and I never came back. And what happened was when I went down, they had, in South Carolina, they had the roads still in sand mode, or sand mode. They were still sand travelways because mm -hmm. they built houses before roads. And I went down and they had drainage culverts in one lane of traffic on the road. It was about 10 o'clock at night. I was coming back, clipped my right rear tire on one of the culverts, which spun the back end around, rolled over broke about everything on the left side of my body, and my head went into a concrete culvert, uh, giving me a basal skull fracture and eight cracked vertebrae and T4 region in my spine. So needless to say, that left me in a coma for three months. Three months. Three months, 87 days. And what is the injury today that still lingers? Oh, it's the traumatic brain injury. It's, it, it's something that you deal with every day. I mean, with me, and, and that's one thing about traumatic brain injuries is people can have a traumatic brain injury, but it affects everybody differently. I, I know guys that's had just about the exact same injury, but their problems are totally different than mine. With me, it's a lot of short-term memory issues. Okay. And so where others I know have had the same problem, they can remember everything. Mm -hmm. That's not me. But... I do what I have to do to make sure I can remember things. Definitely. Uh, association is a big one for me. But it's having that determination to do what I have to to make me appear as normal as possible because I don't like getting bad looks that we get every now and again. I'm sure. Emily, your wife joins you. And um, Emily, you have gone through a lot of this, a lot of the recovery and um, just the, the new processing of our world um, with Chad. And um, can you define the challenge in, in, in this time of your life as well? well? I think the biggest challenge for Chad <coughs> is he's hard on himself. And we're always our own worst critics. Right. And he wants to prove to himself and to others that he can and will overcome and accomplish whatever he sets out to do. Mm -hmm. And so every once in a while I have to calm him down and say, who are you trying to prove yourself to? Uh -huh. Who are you doing this for? Is this for God? Is this for you? Is this for pride? Yeah. And I think once in a while he has to stop and just step back and say, 
okay, maybe I am doing this for pride instead of for God. Yes. And I need to stop and ask, what's God's plan here? Yeah, that's, that's uh, great that he has you yeah. to remind him. You also have um, a child. Yes. And um, what has that been like through the whole parenting process? And I think having our son has, um, and having him grow up around somebody who has a disability has made him just such a generous heart. Oh, I bet. And he sees everyone as a gift from God. And he himself has an amazing faith formation. And um, he's very compassionate and giving and kind. And I have to say that if, if it weren't for Chad being my husband, I probably wouldn't be who I am today. Aww. And I don't think our son would be the young man that he's becoming without yeah. having Chad as, as his father. Yeah. Chad, did you know the Lord when uh, you had your accident? I, I'm a, I was Catholic my whole life. Okay. And when... I mean, even when I was in the military, I went to church every Sunday. That was, you know, that was just the thing. And then once I got out and I started getting into the real world, I guess you might say, I, I kind of started to leave it alone a little bit. Yeah. And it wasn't a high priority on my list. And that was wrong because in the three months I lived in South Carolina, I never went to church once. And I kind of forgot about God, but God never forgot about me. Right. And... After my accident, I started to think about all these things, and it just started to get more in depth with me that I may have been out of God's eyes, or God's been out of my eyes, but I've never been out of His. Right. And ever since then, I've put so much more attention on God that I, I, I feel that part of me making it to where I am today is because of God. And so I'm giving him all the credit because I shouldn't be alive. But some people might get angry and they may say, you know, why, why did you allow this happen to me? And why am I now sometimes struggling and missing things um, unlike my friends? All the time. Yeah. I have such an issue with that because I, like my wife was saying, I want to do more. I, I always want to do what I, was told that I can't do. I, it, and it started off, this is the funny thing, it started off with tying my own shoes. I got sick and tired of tying my own shoes. And my grandmother goes, well, why don't you get Velcro shoes? Your grandfather has them. I said, that's why. Grandpa's got, I'm not in the age category for Velcro <laughs> shoes. So, so you're a bullhead in other words, I'm right? <laughs> extremely. And so I learned to tie my own shoes. Yeah. And it's just one of those things where if there's a way with my determination and perseverance and God's help, I'm going to do it. Yeah. It's just the way it's always been. Because yeah. Definitely. Well, there's so much more to talk with you both about, and we are running out of time. But I know that you are offering support to other people. You have a website. Yes. Okay. And, and where can they find you? Uh, it is at tbiguyspeaks.webs.com. Okay. And... It's either that or they can just go with my original email address, kman0308 at yahoo.com, and put something in the title that would express, you know, a question or whatnot about, you know, what it's like or any questions they have. I mean, because it's a lot more than just TBI. It's about God being on your side and knowing that he's on your side. That's and sometimes we forget that, drowning ourselves in the sorrow and pity that we have because of what we're going through. But with God's help, we'll always get through it. I can't say it better myself. So thank you both for being with us. And um, I appreciate you sharing your story and, and being brave enough to come out and, and um, reveal yourself. So thank you very much. And we wish you only the very best. Thank Thanks you. for having me. Right. Back to you. When fans go to watch the Bulldogs play on a Friday night, they'll walk by this memorial. Most will enter the stadium without ever asking the question, who was Roger Kraft? October 1959, Elida was midway through their season, attempting to have back-to-back -back championship years for their Bulldogs, coached by Art Schreiber. One of his rising stars was a guard by the name of Roger Kraft. 
He excelled in academics so much that he was on track to graduate a year early. He was as smart as could be. I mean, it was just study, books, study, football. Roger was known for being one of those players who loved football and put everything he had into it. He was just football, 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 and if he got hurt, you know what? It didn't matter to him. He wanted to play. On October 16th, Elida was scheduled to play on the road at Pandora. He said, hey, sis, you're going to come and watch me play ball. And I thought, right, who wants to come and watch you play ball? And we just laughed about it. In the third quarter, Elida was finally threatening to score. Kraft threw a block where the collision of the helmets could be heard in the stands. His helmet cracked from the force of the impact. He returned to the huddle and said, I really trapped that guy, but now I can see stars. Roger came back to the bench where his coach was waiting. He told Mr. Schreiber, he said, I'm good to go, you know, let's go. What Roger didn't know was the force of the impact triggered a cerebral hemorrhage in his brain due to a congenital condition which left him vulnerable to brain aneurysms. But much like sudden cardiac death, many of these problems, unfortunately, they go undetected. These people are asymptomatic until there's a catastrophic event. On the next series in the fourth quarter, Roger Kraft returned to the field and after a couple of plays, collapsed. A call went out over the PA for a doctor. Roger, who was barely conscious along with his mother, Mildred, were rushed to St. Rita's Hospital. But a train halted the ambulance and while waiting, Roger's mom knew the end was near. That was a portion of the Emmy Award winning documentary the story of Kraft Memorial Stadium in Elida, produced by Ondo Media. Ondo Media was the recipient of an Emmy at the recent 52nd Annual Ohio Valley Emmy Awards held in Lawrenceburg, Indiana. That was actually just one of two Emmy Awards won by Ondo Media. The other award was for John Ondo's music video of the song Inspire Me by Cedric Easton. Ondo Media is headquartered in the Columbus area, but the founder, John Ondo, is an Elida graduate, started his career right here at TV44. As he continues to expand his production business, he has never forgotten his roots. The story of the Kraft Memorial Stadium adds to a growing list of documentaries Ando has produced commemorating this region, including the 2014 Emmy Award winning Echoes of Gomer School and his first school documentary, Memories of Elida. Ando Media has also released a school documentary focusing on the Bakken School District, and it's currently in production on another documentary focusing on Jackson Center. Now, Ando Media has also been responsible for many past productions seen right here on TV44. Once again, our congratulations to John Ando and Ando Media for receiving two Emmy Awards at this year's Ohio Valley Emmy Awards celebration. Well, we hope you had a chance to enjoy our auction preview show, which began airing last week. The show can also be viewed online. It'll continue to air at specially selected times this week as we gear up for our biggest one day fundraiser of the year, the TV 44 auction. Of course, that is coming up September the 10th. Auction items are still being accepted and now's an excellent time for you to bring in your donations, large or small trailer loader, just a shopping bag full. We are blessed by the items you are willing to donate to the TV 44 auction. Speaking of donations, we're going to tell you a little more about some of the items that have just arrived in the past few days. That's right. Much thanks to Chris Conley, whom we introduced you to earlier this year in connection with the Kirkmont Center and Camping Facility. He worked to get all of these donations available. A week stay at the Habitat House at the Kirkmont Center. The center sits on 274 acres and has seven miles of trails to explore. But that's not all. Logan County, other things on our auction getaway trips. Chris has also arranged for four tickets to the Ohio Caverns, a Logan County throw and other items from the Logan County Historical Center, a $50 gift certificate to the Bed and Breakfast Escape Route 508, two tickets to see Fetterspiel at the Holland Theater on September 23rd. They're a seven piece brass band from Vienna, plus a gift basket for Marie's Candies. Thank you so much to Chris Conley and all the Logan County businesses for donating these incredible items to the TV44 auction. Also in Logan County, Shine FM is donating two tickets to the upcoming Sidewalk Profits concert. And some more information on the Landmark Events Tour that will be available during the auction getaway trips. This is called Civil War in the West. It's a multi-day, multi-site tour. Landmark Events creates historical tours that are presented from a biblical standpoint. They promote their events as family-friendly events where you learn visit historical sites but can do so in the presence of like-minded individuals 
we're going to have a trip to Tennessee for their Civil War in the West tour. According to their website, the Civil War in the West tour joins military historian Bill Potter on a fascinating tour of the Civil War in Middle Tennessee. It includes visits to remarkable sites and tells the compelling and tragic stories of the brave, sacrificial men and the resilient, compassionate women swept up in the storm of war. Day one includes tours of three historic homes in Franklin and Spring Hill. Day two follows the Army's path into Nashville and explores Fort Negley. Negley, is that right? Negley, mm -hmm. Negley. He's my historian <laughs> expert over here. You'll also visit monuments outside the Capitol building and can explore the State Museum on your own. The trip will include overnight accommodations and money for gas or food. Just an excellent package for anyone who enjoys history. That is courtesy partly in LandmarkEvents.org. Also, we are receiving quite a few great donations from our programmers, including looks like some DVDs. That's right. These came from um, these came from Wretched. The Wretched uh, people have sent us an entire box full of items. Um, Andrew Womack's ministry has already sent us a bunch of items as well, and we've heard from a lot of our other programmers who are just overjoyed to be supporting TV44 with our auction endeavor. So if you have any program on our station that you enjoy. Come out to TV44. It could be a great opportunity to get just a great package. These are all DVDs, lots of books, um, very nice resources here. Yeah, be sure to visit WTLW.com regularly to view our updated pictures of donated items. Also donations are now accepted five days a week, Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Call ahead for any other drop-off days and times. It, it also might help to call ahead if you're going to need people available to help unload. Maybe you've got some large items or some heavy items. So just give us a call at 419-339-4444. And of course, we certainly hope that you will attend this year's auction. It's September 10th. Well, an update now on our summer computer graphics campaign. We are so very thankful for all of you who have partnered with us in this unexpected situation this year. We are almost to the $30,000 mark. And there's still time to donate to the project. You can securely donate online at WTLW.com. You can come in person to the station at 1844 Beatty Road, Lima, Ohio 45807 and drop off your donation in person. You can mail a gift to that same address or you can call 419-339-4444 to uh, make a gift over the phone. I have to tell you, I talked with a viewer last week who had called, indicated that he wanted to give a certain amount of money. It was an incredible blessing. As we were talking, he said, uh, you know what, I really, really feel like God is nudging me. I want to double that. I mean, just blew me away. So appreciative, so thankful. Um, we, we, are, we cannot say it enough. We are so thankful that together, you and us are working together to keep TV44 spreading the message all over the region. Absolutely. And as before we leave, we want to take one last look at our scripture for today. It comes to us from Deuteronomy as we are looking forward as school is now coming back to session and we just want to uplift all the the kids going back to school the teachers the educators all that are, are heading back to school as we take a look at deuteronomy chapter 3 uh, verses chapter 32 verses 1 and 2 give ear O heavens and i will speak and hear O earth the words of my mouth let my teaching drop as the rain my speech distill as the dew as raindrops on the tender herb and as showers on the grass. For I proclaim the name of the Lord, ascribe greatness to our God. We're so thankful that you have joined us here for Faith and Friends this week. Continue us in prayer. The auction is very busy. Sports season is starting up. A lot of things are taking place here. And of course, everything we do, we want to do so. Totally glorifying God. Have a great week, everyone. See you next week.